twice a man I'll ever be. She could really put it away. She had most of the six-pack and most of the pizzas. Anyhow, we found a rerun of the Packers game. Oh god, am I talking over the song? Oh jeez, I didn't realize there was another one playing, folks. I'm real sorry. I was just trying to entertain you and make you laugh a little bit before the next song started. Oh jeez, I'm sorry. I'll get out of here.
person. I am poor and I am ugly and I went to a small college and I worked like hell. It would make my life if she would give me just one of the glances that I always seem to give her. So how did a quiet and talkative man from a border town straddling the border of the panhandle of Oklahoma and the panhandle of Texas wind up in a Walmart distribution center outside of Baltimore, Maryland? He had a good paying job, good family, good wife, good kids, good friends, good business, good money, good career, good vibes. How did this man, a quiet yet talkative dentist from a border town straddling the border of the Panhandle of Texas and the Panhandle of Oklahoma, in addition to the border between the mountain and central time zones, wind up in a Walmart distribution center outside of Baltimore, Maryland, where he worked himself to the bone for 8 to 10 to 12 hours a day, all for the sake of scraping by and getting rent money and grocery money and gas money and money for his bills every week? How did he go from having the best dental practice in the area to having no one left that would talk to him? How did he wind up driving away all his friends, all his family, all his relatives, all his kids, all his customers, all the people he had known since childhood? Well, it all started when he was in a thrift shop in rural New Mexico one day, and he saw a magazine entitled The Family Brandy Man, and he thought it was a brilliant prank of some forgotten graphic design student to parody the magazine The Family Handyman and turn it in as a final project for the semester and get a good laugh from the teacher as well as some points for creativity. He thought it'd be really funny to leave it in the waiting room of his dental office just to see people's reactions when they pick it up and say, Wow, would you look at what's in the magazine, honey? They're making magazines for everything nowadays. A family brandy, man. Wow, what a zinger. He thought it'd be a gag. He was, a, he was that type of person. He liked to gag and joke. He liked ribbing people. He liked people pulling gags and ribbing him. He didn't, he didn't take it in addition. He didn't mind. He was in it for the laughs, and he said, Why, What's the point of living if you can't laugh? If you can laugh, then you don't have any problems. But little did he know, and how unfortunate it was, that this particular issue of the family Brandy Man was not only real, but it had a Gary Allen article in it. Now, who exactly is Gary Allen? He takes good men and he makes them worse. He takes men with something to contribute to the world. And he turns them into hoodlums and bums and ragamuffins and puts them out on the street when they used to be walking around with a silver spoon in their mouth. This particular issue of the family brand and man was from February 1996, and the Gary Allen article in question was entitled How Barca Loungers and Cable Did More to Quell Tensions Between Relatives and the Family Drunk Than Any Dare Campaign. People started noticing these things and whatnot went to his dental office for a routine checkup or maybe some more intensive work like having a cavity filled or a root canal. This dental office was already pretty strange because you either you had to leave an hour early or an hour late to get to your appointment on time. You might have been in another state. You might have been in the same state. People started looking around for those magazines that was put out in the waiting room and they saw the family brandy man and they thought the same thing this quiet and untalkative man did. Oh, that's a gag. Someone made this as a prank and they did a really good job with the printing and everything. It looks authentic. Then they started reading it. They got to the Gary Allen article and rumors started circulating that the local dentist was reading Gary Allen articles and they didn't know if they wanted their kids around someone who'd read a Gary Allen article. They started looking into it and they'd written others such as a one for the October 1994 issue of Mobile Homes and Gardens entitled Lawn Art, 
How to prevent wasps and other stinging insects from making nests on your brother's 1986 Monte Carlo that he's going to get running once he catches up on his alimony payments. Ooh, that was pushing it. That was really pushing it. If he was reading this kind of stuff, what was he going to expose their kids to when he took them back in the, in the back room for the usual checkup? Was it going to be the usual checkup or was it going to be an unusual checkup? Pretty soon people started going to other dentists. They started driving 10 miles to another town to see their dentist. They started driving 50 miles to get a cavity filled. They started flying across the country to have a root canal. They started going to other countries to do anything more than that. And this dentist, he had no idea what was going on. He didn't know it was all related to the issue of uh, the family brandy man that he'd found in a rural New Mexico thrift shop. No one ever told him. He just... One day I had to lock the doors for the last time and he got on a Greyhound bus and he drank himself to sleep in the back seat and he said wherever he woke up, that's where he woke up. And how little did he know that he would wake up in Baltimore, Maryland. When he arrived in that city, he had $500 in his wallet and an empty bottle of Sailor Jerry's in his hand. He stumbled off the bus at high noon. And he made his way to the local homeless shelter where he thought he'd shower and take a few days to sleep off the immense hangover he had. And he said he was going to get the first job he could get. And then he was going to get some money together. And then he was going to travel the world. He was going to go everywhere. He was going to go down the highways, the byways, the triways. He was going to go to Russia. He was going to go to Australia. He was going to go to Japan. He'd go wherever he had to to get away from this reputation he'd developed over and seemingly overnight. He didn't know even why he developed it. No one ever told him that it was related to that Gary Allen article. Any other issue of the family brain man other than one with a Gary Allen article, and it would have been fine. But he just happened to pick up the wrong one at the wrong time and showed it to the wrong people. After a few days, he walked into the unemployment and told them he would take the first job that they could get him, which happened to be on third shift at Walmart Distribution Center, which was just outside of town, and the bus ran... Within a half mile of it, and it wasn't a long walk after that. And he said, that's fine, I'll take it. I gotta have something to get me back on my feet. I just need to get some money together, and then I'm gonna get on the train, and I'm gonna go to a place. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do something. And then go back to that godforsaken town that threw me out after 20 years of faithful dentistry. So he starts working third shift at Walmart Distribution Center. It's just going to be for a little bit till he can get a couple of grand saved up. But you know, rent is real expensive in those bigger cities, and he hadn't had that problem in the Midwest. In fact, what he was paying for in his apartment was actually his mortgage on his two-story house back on that border town straddling the border between the panhandle of Texas and the panhandle of Oklahoma, and also the border between the central and mountain time zones. Before you know it, two or three years has gone by, and before you know it, he's getting his five-year badge, and before you know it, he's getting his ten-year badge, and he's wondering where the time went. And finally, one day, the pallet jack he's using runs into his ankle, and it smashes the lower half of his leg, and he goes to the, to the HR department after he gets out of the hospital, and he gives him a 15-page manifesto of why he's never, ever working there again. Walking around on crutches, he's going to be ruined for life. And they said, can you come back to work after you get out of the cast? And he said, like hell, I'll come back to work. I'm going to be hobbling around for the rest of my life. And I can't be in here in negative 32 degree temperatures in the freezer and negative 20 degree temperatures in the dairy section and negative 50 degree temperatures in the meat section. I can't be doing this for the rest of my life. I've already wasted a decade here and I don't know where that decade went. And he didn't really read him the riot act. He went in there with that 15 page manifesto and at the top of his lungs in a passionate empowered voice he read him every last word of it. And then he got on the same Greyhound bus that had brought him to that fateful town in Baltimore, Maryland ten years ago. And he got on that goddamn bus and he left. And he never looked back. And he drank himself to sleep once more with the same brand of liquor that he'd had once before ten years ago. And he fell asleep in the back of the bus for the first time. And he knew he was going to fall asleep in the back of the bus for the second time. And he had no idea where he was going to wind up. But as long as there weren't any Gary Allen articles or Walmart just to be concerned by God, he'd be happy wherever he wound up.
They said that this was taking it way too far Stuff like Wallace and Gromit In America, gorge on filth Then show your friends how to vomit
Boxcar killed someone when it sped across the grade crossing yesterday, all because a forklift driver in a warehouse was in a hurry to unload his load, and he released a parking brake on this particular rail car because he needed to move it around and be another one, and then this is a direct violation of FRA regulations and protocol. You're supposed to call your rail service provider and have them so send a locomotive to move a car around or bring you a car you need to take away a car you got loaded up. And this particular rail car ran down the side and jumped the switch onto the main line and it killed a man driving a van on his way home to a wife who didn't love him anymore and a kid who'd rather not be around him anymore. And this particular man has a son who likes smoking dope and popping pills because they are cheap thrills and he affords with a marginal amount of money he makes from his after school job that he works after school. And his daughter is unique in birth control pills from her mother's chest of drawers because some boy thinks she has a nice chest and wants to get in her drawers. I suppose everybody knows, I suppose everybody knows, everybody knows and knows who does know how it goes. I suppose everybody knows, I suppose everybody knows, everybody knows and knows who does know how it goes. I suppose everybody knows, I suppose everybody knows, everybody knows and knows who does know how it goes. I suppose everybody knows, I suppose everybody knows, everybody knows and knows who doesn't know how it goes. Cause I thought that meant I was her guy 
I annoyed some good lookers like flubbing my turn in snooker Cause I thought I'd lined up the corner shot In this days I missed my chance to get in a brunette's pants Because I was distracted by this blonde Who ignored her friends, who told her to make amends And admit she could not follow through By now I made my mark, a lasting first impression People thought they knew my limits my choice came back to bite me because they tried to fight me Whenever I aspired to stretch my legs It just goes to show, don't bother with flirty hoes She could've at least offered to stroke my dome I made the wrong decision, I'm the only one I can blame I made the wrong decision, I'm the only one I can blame all that glitter would be gold If I'd only listen to what I was told Pills, pills are small and pink, the more you take, the less you think, the less you think, the better you feel, so take some pills with every meal.
Boy, folks, let me tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I was working the circuit down in Baltimore, Maryland one time, and I'm at the bus stop trying to get back to the hotel, when this cat comes over to me and he's all hopped up on Pepto-Bismol, and he starts jiving about the price of tea in China. I'm like, shit, Pops, what's the price of tea in China? And he starts talking about how if we didn't have Silly Willy and the Philly Band on the airwaves and in the record stores, how our society would be a lot better off. And if we wanted to make things better, we'd get rid of Silly Willy and the Philly Band. I'm like, Silly Willy and the Philly Band, I love those guys. And he's like, see, that's a problem. Everyone loves them. And I'm like, well, what's wrong with them? He's like, well, they're brainwashing people and buying their records and doing what they say on the albums. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? If you got a girl over and you put on an album by Silly Willy and the Philly Band, you don't get any. There's something wrong with you. And he's like, you see, that's the problem. It's all mind control. I'm like, mind control? Get out of here, Pops. And anyways, that's all I got for tonight. Thanks for coming out to the show, and be sure to drive safe on the way home.